I'm Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years. Now I'm retired, but I still train as hard as I can to set the best times on the toughest climbs I can find and go on fun adventures on my bike all over the world. This is Worst Retirement Ever. So I made another Everest attempt. Uh, it didn't go well, but I was, you know, I had it filmed in the hopes that it would go well. So I might as well tell you about it. Now my last attempt was uh, was thwarted by I, ha I had good legs. I did my taper ride. I had a good training block, all that. Um, but it was killed by it was just unseasonably warm. The forecast lied that day, and. Uh, and it just it got to be super hot and I had to bail uh, just kind of past the halfway I was up on the record at the time but I was like this isn't gonna be the day to, to set a good time as it was just almost 90 degrees it was correct that day to, to stop early uh, not bury myself trying to get a record in, in bad conditions and sort of circle back for for a better day uh, and I did that I totally did that I had another couple weeks of, of good training I had a couple good little power tests and I did the taper kind of the same way I always do the way I've done for many years is you go do a couple short days you keep your legs rested um, and then you kind of do an opener to, to get your legs back going again uh, normally I come out of that just firing on all cylinders right before my bike was all in order my uh, I, I filled all the bottles I got everything prepped and ready to go oh, my phone. <laughs> She loves it. I also did all the little things that you're supposed to do to, to stay recovered and stay fresh and you know eating right all, all the all the basics were tick. I'd also learned a lot from that other attempt. Um, my my friends who were doing the the logistics part uh, they all knew their job so I didn't have to do like a, a little powwow and, and delegating at the start. I knew exactly what my lap times had to be what power had to be to hit those lap times. I had a good schedule for for food. Uh, for drink, all that stuff was like pretty dialed. I even had a had a guy, a guy slid into my DMs uh, who works for a company that does like more advanced, so they do weather for like Uber and JetBlue, uh, and I guess they have like a consumer app. But he was like, "Can we can we help you?" And I said, "Yeah, tell me that conditions are going to be good <laughs> on Sunday, or tell me to cancel it." And they gave me a whole report, and the weather the weather was supposed to be good, and was indeed good. It was the it was it was perfect out. It was like high of 66 degrees like a little bit colder would be ideal but uh definitely not something that would like ruin my day or significantly slow me down but when i woke up on the day i just didn't feel right and i wish there was a better way to put that uh but there's not i just i i, I didn't sleep great um my whoop score was just kind of bad so i'm sitting there eating breakfast and i like i thought about calling it off but i don't really have like you know my legs should be good i don't have any reason other than like the whoop score. I certainly had good days on a not great whoop score and more so in the endurance like you want to have want to be real sharp uh, for you know a, a short KOM for a long endurance day like I definitely had plenty of good long endurance rides when my whoop isn't isn't full on and plus I got my friends coming to support I got fellow fix I've got the the Malibu police uh, are, are gonna be out there to, to keep an eye on things so it's hard to like call it off I also thought like maybe maybe going out not feeling super sharp will be good. It'll help me kind of pace it, not go too hard the first hour like I did the first effort. Um, so, so I went for it anyway. I got started. I really nailed my pacing. Uh, the first hour, I was like dead even on record time. The second hour, I think I was like 10 seconds behind. Third hour, same thing. Like I crank it up, you know, five more watts. So now I'm trying to do 310 going up the hill. And at the halfway point, I was still like exactly on pace. I was maybe 200 feet down on the record, which isn't like you're in big trouble territory. But I could also tell like by, just by how I felt, there's no way I'm gonna negative split this day. There's no way I'm gonna go faster the next three and a half hours than I would before. I'm just gonna dig myself in that hole. Uh, so so I, once again, I, I called it. Yeah, I wanna... Do you want to sit somewhere? I can put the chair down. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm so panting. Um. You're rolling.
Yeah. The uh, so I stopped again. This is another DNF in the Everesting deal. I don't know what it was. It was the the weather was better today. I was uh I was just going slower and not feeling as good. Even though I don't know what's going on. The uh, all I can think is my bike is too heavy. No, I'm kidding. The bike's fine. Um, <laughs> so I went home feeling like obviously a little sore and tired as 15,000 feet and three and a half hours to do you, but more like annoyed the whole situation, questioning all of it. The thing is like, it's not even about not getting the record. Like I want the record, but it's mostly just about the frustration of like not having a good shot at it. Uh, my, my poor friends who stood outside of a hill half the day um, and knowing that that was either a waste or or what. And Emily asked, "Is you know, was it were you nervous? Was it nerves that maybe made you feeling weird that day?" And looking at my power, I was doing better on the day when it was 86 degrees and when it was 66. And I also thought about like the number of races that I was nervous for. I never bay on 40 hours notice. And, uh, you know, nerves weren't the problem. <laughs> so I kind of reject that. Sure, it's been a while since I raced, but uh, I, I can, I know how to make myself perform. And, uh, and for whatever reason, that was, that was the best I had that day. And that, you know, that just happens. I had bad days. Everyone gets bad days. So aside from the part where I wasn't feeling my best, I'm also questioning maybe this hill isn't suitable. Uh, like maybe the only way to break this record is to go to Sean Gardner's hill which I really don't want to do until, you know, there's a vaccine, it makes more sense to travel. Listen, there's nothing less essential than me going for records. <laughs> when it comes to essential travel only, this doesn't qualify, in my opinion. Because Trancus Canyon, well, it does meet the requirements of the correct average gradient, which is super steep to get this record. And that's comparable to Sean's. It's not as long as Sean's Hill in Virginia. So he had, I gotta do 30 something more turnarounds and he does to call that 10 seconds every time. The hill I used for the first record, Mountain Gate was like pretty straight going down. So I really got, I got a good like minute 15 of recovery every lap. This one, it's, it's down, it's straight enough that I can go downhill full speed, but I'm still like leaning into those turns, still driving the bike, uh, that's using your core. It's like far less recovery. It's 45 seconds instead of a minute. Um, so it doesn't really feel like you're recovering at all. And then and then you get to the bottom 50 seconds, you're slamming your brakes, which is all speeding, going from 55 miles an hour to zero. Is That's also uh, a little tough on the shoulders. Uh, it's, it's really beating up my whole body. So legs going up and everything else going down. Then I thought maybe I'm overtrained. Like overtraining, generally it's, it's an overused term. Uh, but, but in this case, like I hadn't taken, normally when I, was, when I was racing, you take a month off every year, at least like three weeks off the bike and one week easy. Uh, that'd usually be like October. Uh, in 2019, I, I had that big crash in the summer. So that was basically a month off the bike. So that October, I was still like building into shape. So I didn't take a break then. Uh, and then last year I was like, oh, I'm trying to Everest in the winter, so I'll hold on. But now we're on to like a year and a half of like pretty hard training, like average hours per week is still a little bit over 20 uh, with, with I hadn't had more than two days off in a row. So I, so I talked to my coach and I was like, maybe I just need a break. Maybe I need my month off. Um, and then, and then we, we go for some KOMs this year and then think about like when it's safe to, to try again at a different hill. Um, and, and he taught me out of it. Frank kind of, he's like, let's do one more try. Um, let's let's take a little mini break, uh, a couple days off, rest up, do a cycle until like I feel good for a few days in a row. So like another, do another good three week block, something like that, um, and then give it one more shot and, and and beg my friends to to waste one more day on the side of a hill in Malibu. That was a real safe pass from this Jeep Oop, wagon wagon. Look how courteously they drive. Oh, and the honk. <laughs> LA is wonderful. Um, so, so that's what we're gonna do. I'll give it another shot. Uh, I've, I've got an open mind. Uh, you're looking at my first ride in three days. I hadn't. This is this is the longest I, off I've had in uh, 
in like I said a year and a half so three days of no bikes and then that's also not going to detrain you but it, it should freshen me up a little bit um, and, and we'll try it again that's that's where we're at on the efforts and the, the Everesting 24-7 network uh, is on its last legs <laughs> as am I for for whatever this this season is but uh, you know we'll, we'll keep going and you know otherwise we'll just do some fun stuff I still got a lot of KOMs I still gotta get Mount Lemon back you guys like I haven't forgotten about that Lionel Sanders uh, I just had something else to do that was local but maybe it's time for a couple little road trips with the camera thanks for watching and uh, we'll, we'll keep you keep you posted yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm pretty annoyed and salty, and I'm ready to go home and, and sleep for a week at least. Oh, I, I guess I should remind. See, I was hoping to get the record and then do like a no kid hungry deal, um, but that's not how the world works. The, uh, if you think this is suffering, there are people who are actually suffering. Uh, no kid hungry takes care of that. My suffering is totally pointless and voluntary and uh, doesn't qualify. So there's a link in the dealie. Let's get that going. We reset it for uh, for this year. Um, that's uh, if you feel like cheering me up, that would be cool.